Welcome, welcome. We will get started here in a minute. I got my bag of Lay's and my vanilla Coca-Cola. We are not having adult beverages today. <clears throat> okay. Uh, first off, if you're watching this afterward or if you're currently watching this, I apologize about all the background noise. It is extremely windy here in southern Nevada. Uh, we've been seeing gusts up to 65 miles per hour, what we call Santa Ana conditions here in the West Coast. So I apologize about that, but we're going to get started here. <clears throat> Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, here live on Saturday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific Time. We have a lot to cover tonight. Uh, this is a record amount of emails. Hi, Keith. How are you doing? Larry? Theo? Yep, just, yep, wind just left Ohio. There you go. How you guys doing, my friends? Appreciate you. Karen, how are you doing? Greg Lynch, how you doing? How's everybody doing today? I got a record amount of communications this week. Um, if you've been paying attention to the podcast at all, I made two new sources uh, that will help me kind of balance the loss of my, I would say, the closest sources that I had in this industry that I learned so much from. Um, yeah, exactly. Keep up your great work in the channel and podcast. Thank you, no, the Gnome on Tour. Appreciate you. So uh, I want to start with a very important email that I got uh, on Saturday of last week after the show was over. Okay, and I'm going to get to it right here. Sorry. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, you got to love that wind. And you got to love it hit my slide uh, topper here in this coach. It's crazy. Here it is. Okay. Here we go. Dear HB, we have just bought... A grand design momentum two years ago and so far we have had almost zero luck getting any help from the factory we were dealing with a young lady named Christine Holland which you refer to as Chris Holland and now I have been passed on to two other people and it seems as if I'm getting the runaround daily. What my husband and I are thinking about doing is going down to our local weld shop. Sorry, I didn't say that right. Weld shop. And have them fix our frame problem and pay for it out of pocket. And then hire someone to go after Grand Design for the reimbursement. But I don't know if that's necessarily going to help. We are at a complete loss. We don't know what to do. And we'd like your feedback. Okay. So this is one of this is the email that kind of started, and there's several emails kind of like this, and then I talked to a few people over the phone <clears throat> that confirmed that they've been passed on to somebody else, that Christine Holland is no longer handling any customer-related issues when it comes to frame failure or frame flex. Okay. I wouldn't give it back to the bank, but at this point, I told somebody over the phone today, just keep fighting the fight. I mean, that's all you can really do. I mean, if you give it back to the bank, then if you if it ruins your dreams, if it ruins what you had worked your whole life for, it'll ruin your credit to the point where you can't get another one. And for a lot of you, you're at the twilight of your life. You want to go enjoy yourself. You worked your butt off to get to this point where... You have a little bit of extra money and you have your house paid for or you did all the right things and you know 
to me, if you want to spend the money to get it fixed so you can go hit the road faster, absolutely. But if I were your, in your shoes, I would get an attorney to go after the money. That way you can go enjoy yourself. That's what I would do. Because if you're willing to spend twenty or $25,000 to have a welder that you trust, that you can see yourself, obviously see them getting the job done properly, I could see you doing that. But realize once it's fixed, there may not be a leg to stand on. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. I would definitely reach out to an attorney and get their opinion, especially since I'm not familiar with your state laws. If this was California, I tell you, go directly to a lemon law attorney. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. But I don't know what your state looks like and what their laws are. So I feel bad for everybody that has that is going through this problem. This is um, um, this is just painful for me because I've. I've always tried to do the right thing in my life, especially in this industry, because this industry is so small. And it brought up something I read on LinkedIn. Okay, so I was on LinkedIn. There's a guy named Chandler McGee. He owns, or he's part of owner of Funtown RV in Texas and Arkansas, etc. And it says, Sam Walton said, there is only one boss the customer, and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down simply by spending his money somewhere else. And that is true. Okay. There you go. The gnome on tour. I'll, I'll definitely email him back that. That's pretty good. Um, You may disagree, Keith, and that's understandable, but thanks, Larry. <laughs> um, it's it's going to be a rough road for people. It's going to be a rough time because of the way these allegations are occurring. Th this is like every single day I get a heartbreaking email or some form of communication from someone that they're a first time they're a first time purchaser they've never owned an rv before ever and they're having these crappy experiences with a company that was put on this grand pedestal that really wasn't that good but because they did a good job with marketing and they did a great job with social media they grew they were ahead of their time so, um, I also want to cover something real quick. Uh, I, I got a lot of reach out, about 50 communications so far through email, direct message, text message, that a lot of you wish for me and Liz Amazing to tag team this thing. That would be very tough to do. <clears throat> Same thing with Ford. There you go, Peter. Um... It would be very hard for me and Liz Amazing to work together because our styles would cl uh, would clash a lot, okay? Um, you know, do I make money doing this? Very little. Do I hope I can make as much as she does one day? Sure. But I'm never going to change my style over it. Um, I, again, it's just a clash of two worlds. I think we have the same goal at the end of the day to help make changes in the industry. But I just don't feel like it's something that she would want to do. And if she did want to do it, she'd want to do it her way instead of collaborating, if you get my drift. So, um, you know, so I'm, I'm here to make an announcement today. I am going 
to send an email because if you didn't see my reaction video to Liz Amazing's last video, uh, hop over to the podcast after this. You can kind of get an idea of what my thoughts were. I didn't take a side, but then again, you know, I believe what they did to Liz was bullshit. Oops, excuse my language. I don't normally cuss on here. I usually save that for the podcast. Um, but I don't. I think it's absolute BS what they did to her. Uh, slapping her with this, uh, this, the cease and disorder, uh, letter was just terrible. <clears throat> and I think it's absolutely horrid. Um, it was almost me. I've never owned an RV before and me and my wife want to go full time and almost bought a momentum. Well, Keith, there's lots of other products out there. Lots of other co- Jayco's a good one. Alliance is a good one. You can also look into Forest River. You know, you got Riverstone. Uh, you got Cedar Creek. Um, you know, in the toy hauler world, you got the Rogue Armored, which is probably their best toy hauler on the Forest River lineup. You got Keystone Fusion, good product. Uh, you've got uh, Riverstone by Forest River, the 45 Bath, really great product. So there's lots to look at out there. Lots to look at. Lots of fifth wheel toy haulers out there. So have fun in the process. It's, it's, it should be fun. And that, I, I think that we all in the industry need to uh, remember that this is all about fun, right? So moving on, I'm sorry about that. I got a little sidetracked there. I enjoyed that. Um, so I made a decision today that I'm going to email Jason Lippert and I'm going to request that I go do the interview. I didn't want to do it. I don't really want to do it because I don't think I'm the right person to do it. I think realistically, Liz Amazing is the right person to do the interview, but I just don't see it occurring after re-watching her video and rereading um rereading the uh, letters that she posted on the video um so yeah so i wrote a letter to jason i rewrote it because i actually sent it to some folks that are follow the podcast and they proofread it for me and then i decided today that I'm going to have to do it myself because I think they would do it with me because I've been in the industry and I'm a little more flexible of let's get the interview organized. So that's what my goal is. My goal is to organize an interview with Jason Lippert or someone that is a high ranking official and do it more organized, do it more professionally and get to the bottom of what's going on. Um, and I'm pretty sure that they would also let me do a factory tour. I'm pretty sure that they would allow me to bring up curveball questions that JD obviously could not do. I just got to find the time and I got to find a way to put it together. Hey, thank you, Keith. Appreciate you, man. Um, she, you know, I don't know if she wants to prove her claims because if I were in her shoes, I wouldn't give up my source. I would rather delete my video because I already did that. I was asked by my sources to delete the video, but I would never give up my sources. So if I were in her shoes, I would probably delete the videos and and probably re-release them cutting out all the stuff about the informant and then reposting them i mean that's what i would do right um yeah so i made that decision about 10 minutes before i came here live so um <clears throat> Good. Uh, wish me luck on that because I don't know if they'll. I don't know if they'll do it, but they may, because I think that 
there has to be some more transparency. And I think if there's more transparency, at least from one company, the focus can go on to another. And that's how I feel about it. Okay. All right. So let's get to the next email. That's enough of that depressing stuff. Okay. Uh, Dear HB, obviously we follow you a lot and we are not going to buy a grand design, but we'd like your thoughts on Arctic Fox and Outdoors RV. We like the travel trailer in the Arctic Fox a little bit better. We also like the Nash, but it seems like every place we go that carries each of the products or all three products combined don't really know or edu or not educated enough to tell us what the differences are could you please elaborate some of your knowledge about the company and maybe it'll help us decide between the three products well it's been about six years since I sold Arctic Fox or Nash or Outdoors RV. So it's been, it's been some time. Um, this is what I know to be true about all three products. They are built identically. There is no construction difference that I'm aware of between the three travel trailers outside of the fact that if I remember correctly, and shoot me if I'm wrong, metaphorically, not literally, Nash is has the ability to still put a onboard onboard propane generator for the travel trailer. Okay. Um, realistically, the reason why I like Northwood Manufacturing, Outdoors RV, etc is they limit how many they're going to build in a year. So if there's 500 people that want an Arctic Fox and they planned on building 350, they're not going to build 500. They're going to stick to the 350. And the reason why they do that is obviously on their mind, it just saves money overall. They get to make more profit per copy because they get to charge more money but at the same time, they bring out a lesser Armageddon-level product. Now, they do have their problems. They're not perfect, okay? But to me, I'd rather see a limitation on how much is built than to have someone like Cherokee that mass-produces things and builds a yard. So... I'm going to pick on a product I sell. I, ch I sell Cherokee products, okay? So let me pick on them for a minute. Their philosophy is mass production. So the, even though they don't have the orders, even though dealers might be overstuffed with them on the lot, they're going to mass produce them and ship them in a the yard. They're going to stuff them in a the yard, and they're going to sell off the yard, okay? That's their philosophy. That's their product manager's philosophy. He, he would rather not build to order. He'd rather just mass produce whatever he thinks is going to sell and then shove it onto the dealership lots. It's worked for them. Okay. It's worked for them. They have one of the lowest warranty claim percentages of Forest River. And yet, again, I like it better when you build to order. So that's why I think what Outdoors RV and Northwood Manufacturing do is something that I believe is very beneficial for the industry and the customer and should be looked at. Okay. Let's see. Let me miss something. I hope it goes well, too. Thank you. Don't trust the big truck Lippert interview was a joke. Yeah, Greg, it was. We all know it was. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, tracker boats is the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, don't worry about the trolls, guys. That's why we have uh, mediators now, okay? Don't worry about trolls. It's not a big deal. I'm over the trolls. It doesn't matter. Okay, next one. 
Uh, since the banks are going to be stricter on granting loans for used RVs, is it worth waiting to buy a used RV if we have a decent down payment and a good FICO? I really enjoy your channel even though we are only interested in motorhomes. I learn a lot from your channel that I can't find from other sources. Thanks for being honest and clarity. Do you know a video source that is similar to you but deals with motorhomes? Thank you. Thank you for, for the comment. I, I do deal in motorhomes. I'm probably going to do more motorhome videos coming up pretty soon. Um, I just don't do a lot of them because lately I haven't had... Um, I don't really sell diesel pushers anymore as much as I used to. Um, but I am going to talk about used RVs. I'm going to talk about... Um, diesel pushers versus gas this month. I'm going to talk about uh, the Mercedes versus the Ford versus the Dodge versus the Chevy on Class Cs and Class Bs. So there's a lot to come that I haven't gotten to yet, but I'm going to start filming tomorrow. Um, but as far as it worth waiting to buy a used RV if we have a decent down payment, a good FICO score, no. It's not worth waiting because we don't know where the bottom is. And the longer you wait, the harder it's going to become. Okay. Now, that's not say go rush out there and jump off a cliff and go buy something. Okay. But if you ran a, ran across the right motor home that fit everything you're looking for, price budget, payment, down payment, if all of it fits together real nicely in a bow, pull the trigger. Don't, excuse my language, but don't freaking wait. Waiting is not a good idea because there's no way to time everything perfectly, okay? First off, we're going to get an interest rate hike. Remember, everybody said I was a quack, okay? If everybody who follows us, remember all the trolls that were telling me that I was full of crap when I said that the interest rates would never get cut this year. And because inflation was not going to get under control, not where the Fed wants it to be. And we're now in April and they're talking about raising interest rates again. Behind closed doors, they're seriously debating about raising the Fed rate again. And remember all that talk about they're going to cut the rate three times. And I called what? I called BS because I listened to everything Jerome Powell said. So the longer you wait, the more it's going to cost you. But then again, when it comes to used, this is where it's tougher than new, is with used, you got to make sure it's the right unit, everything works, you've had it inspected, and it fits within all the boxes. So... Don't be afraid. If you found something in three weeks, pull the trigger. If you find something in three months, pull the trigger. Don't wait. Okay. Uh, hey, buddy, bringing my Jayco JFly 284 BHS home. Seismic goes to Indiana on Monday. Go, Dean. You got yourself a 284. Good job, brother. Very happy for you. And, uh, Hopefully, guys, if you don't know, Dean's been through hell with that seismic. Uh, he's shared everything with me, and we've been chit-chatting on Messenger off and on. Even though jaco has been very, very, like, communicative with him, the one thing that, um, you know, he's found out is that because of the issue his fifth-wheel toy hauler is going through, the dealerships that he's been talking to to trade it in because Jayco's going to give him, and Dean, I'm not going to give the amount away because that's your own private thing, but they were going to give him a pretty decent sum of money. He had frame flex. He had frame flex and frame failure. Jayco was trying to get him out of it and get him traded out of it and into something new. Um, again, a different approach than what Grand Design RV does. He's one of the few guys that has had a seismic that has reached out to me. Uh, he's, he, there's only three total people that had a seismic or a talon that reached out to me. So it's obviously a very, very small problem 
in the Jayco area, but as you can tell, Grand Design is not the only ones, but one of the things about Jayco is Jayco is actually responding. It may not be what I would prefer them to do or what Dean would prefer them to do or a customer would prefer them to do, but at least they're moving the needle in the right direction, right? So it's not just Grand Design, um, but the predominant amount of people, I'm talking about now I'm up to about 87% of the people that reach out to me have a solitude or a momentum with all the frame failure and frame flex allegations. The other 13% of people reach out to me with Jayco, uh, a couple of Jaycos, a couple of Montanas. The third most people that reach out to me is Keystone Montana High Country slash Alpine. That's the third most brand that I get, and it's still a very small percentage compared to Solitude and Momentum, okay? Um, no, I understand, Keith. Look, Frame Failure and Frame Flex has been around since the 1980s. This is nothing new. It's not the problem that, and I've, I've been explaining this a lot and trying to get this across to folks. If Grand Design RV did not have this problem, if it was somebody else and they were handling it properly and with more pro-customer experience instead of trying to sweep it under the rug, allegedly, then realistically, this problem would be an under-the-radar problem because that's how small of a percentage it is, okay? The more homework I've done, the more research I've done, the more people that have reached out to me, the more I'm understanding what the problem is. Well, I appreciate you, Keith, really do. So the realistic part is, is we need to get to a point in time where everybody understands this is not a full Lippert problem. Yes, they have uh, they have their portion of blame, okay? And I'm not going to let them off the hook for it. But once again, Lippert builds a lot of the frames, if not the super majority of frames. And yet, this is a predominant alleged problem with the super majority of the problem going directed towards one manufacturer, okay? So don't be scared about every other brand. I've gotten some guys that have talked to me. One guy talked to me about 2019 Keystone Montana that he had the problem with back in 2020. And Keystone bought him out of it because it was something he couldn't, He, stri he they simply couldn't fix it. So they bought him out of it. And now he's in another, I think he's in a Keystone Cougar now. Okay. Uh, look at, yeah, it's Amia has talked about the 2007 Forest River. If you go back, Tom from uh, It's a Life, or oh my God, I can't remember the name of the channel, but he had a Columbus fifth wheel in 2017, and he religiously talks about the fact that Forest River came out and fixed it. So it's a difference in how a company reacts to a major problem. Okay. Now, here's the interesting part. Winnebago, which owns Grand Design, if this was happening in their motorhome division, which is completely run different than any of their towable departments, this would fly under the radar because they would just take care of it because that's how Winnebago Motorhomes has always been. Okay, so very different. Yeah, I mean, Larry, I agree. I, I don't know. That's why I, I think I'm going to have to be the one... Um, that goes and talks to these guys. I, I, I've come to the conclusion it's got to be me. And I know that sounds egocentric, but I, I've come to that conclusion. Okay. Yeah, they're working with him. And, and um, yeah, so uh, they're working with him. I'm not going to give all the details because that's his private thing. Okay. But they're they're in the process of helping him. So I'm not going to, I mean, I'm, I'm mentioning it because he's a great guy and he, you know, him and I've had a lot of conversations, but all the, all the details I'm going to keep very private because that's something between him and Jayco. And if he wants to come out and send everybody an email or, or, or tell me it's okay, then, you know, I'll definitely release the details. But as you guys know, I like to try to keep people's, 
uh, stuff as private as possible and release as little as information to keep your guys' privacy. So, um, oh yeah, Daryl, absolutely. And they had that problem back in 2014 and 2016 as well. So there can only be one. That is the one. That is Jet Lee, Jason Statham. That's right. There can only be one. That's right. Or it can be the Matrix. You know, I, you know, he is the one. No, that's okay. All right, next vi next email. Let's get to the next email. We got a lot. I mean, I can't get to everybody, but I'm going to get to as many as I can here. Okay. Uh, big shout out, by the way, to Pete and Lisa West. I think they've done an amazing job with their Facebook group. Um, you know, that's a difference of somebody that does not have an ulterior motive besides helping people. So if you guys are having major problems with your grand design product, it doesn't have to be frame failure. It doesn't have to be frame flex. Um, but yeah, wrong. Okay. I'm wrong. I'll have to figure that one out later then. Okay, here we go. Uh, dear honey badger. Okay. I got to skip through all the personal stuff. Okay. Our understanding is that Arctic packages allow you to camp in sub-zero temperatures. What we plan to do is travel all across the United States and Canada for the next four years with our kids. And we are mainly desert people. So we're not used to like snow and things of that nature. And we want to actually experience areas like Yellowstone, like parts of Canada that get snow in the winter. But what we are worried about is our tanks freezing, our water lines freezing. And it seems to me that everybody claims they're a four season unit, but you're the only one that tells us that that is all. And you can tell there's explicit, explicit there. Um, what is your opinion of something affordable, something that's less than a hundred thousand dollars and what could we do to possibly make it a little bit better ourselves on the side if we decided to buy something used rather than something new. Okay. Uh, so best thing that I can tell you is the number one thing you should look for is a coach that has a sealed underbelly. As long as it has a sealed underbelly, the rest of it's real easy because you can add tank heaters, so you can add those 12 volt blanket heaters onto your tanks. Um, you can add insulation. Um, you can skirt the fifth wheel. There's portable skirt material that you can wrap around the bottom of your fifth wheel when you're going to be at a place for a week to try to keep that cold wind from going through the bottom of your coach. Um, you know, if you're in full time hookups, you can take a portable or a, a, a ceramic, you know, little space heater and put it underneath the coach and turn it on low. These are things I did with the Keystone Cougar that my kids and my wife are in. Um, you know, my, we also uh, put this type of bubble wrap on the windows because the windows are your weakest point of insulation. Um, that was something we did that helped keep it warm. Um you know, things like that. Just make sure that you always have emergency heaters with you because emergency heaters, if your furnace takes a crap, um, you know, you, you have different heat sources. Uh, and the last thing is whether you buy something new or used, try to get something with a fireplace because that's pretty much a, sp a larger space heater and works pretty good. Um, for, oh God, 420 makes you this. How high? That's from how high? Oh my God. Um, hint of the gathering. Oh God. Downsizing makes sense. Was overweight the first time in a scale. Not everything is in it yet. I think most trolls don't even on a trailer or fifth wheel. That's probably true. Uh, agreed. Um, anyway, so those are the type of things I would do. 
Um, now, if you're going to spend one hundred and fifty, one hundred sixty thousand dollars, even up to two hundred grand, now you're going to an actual real Four Seasons fifth wheel. Um, you could take uh, now. You could go to a Cedar Creek that says they have the uh, the Four Seasons package, is what they call it, and you know they already have the tank heaters on. Uh, Keystone Cougar calls it the thermal pack, the thermal weather package. I have that on my Keystone Cougar. It has the heated the heated tanks. Um, you know, so if you want to put less work into it, uh, you could get the ones that say they have some form of Arctic package. And realistically, now here's the one thing I will tell you. Okay, the secret that we learned camping in sub-zero temperatures at night is to get those heated water hoses, especially if you're going to a campground. So once we got that heated hose, we stopped having water problems. So, you know, they plug in, they have very low voltage, low, low, very low amperage, and it kept, I mean, they're expensive as hell, but totally worth it. So if you're going to go that route, you want to make sure you do that. Clock needs a battery. Yes, it does, but it makes too much noise right now. Uh, my uncle used to camp at Mount Snow in the winter. That's in Vermont. He used winterized the motorhome, and each time they used the bathroom, poured a little antifreeze down the tank. There you go. That's another great thing. A bulge heater might help keep the underbelly warm. Yep. Highlander. Oh, I completely forgot about Highlander. Oh, God. Sean Connery. Oh, yes, that's right. There can only be one. Yes. I don't know why I didn't think about that. I've been in the 80s mood lately, and I didn't even think about that. That's crazy. By the way, does everybody know that there's a second Beetlejuice movie coming out? I about, like, killed myself, at, like, metaphorically when I saw Michael Keaton in a theatrical trailer with Winona Ryder. And I'm like, no way. And anybody notice that Jenny Ortega and Winona Ryder look very similar from the very first Beetlejuice movie? It's very cool. Or disconnect your water line daily and use a pump. Only drag out the hose when you have to refill. That's a good one, Blair. Absolutely. Yeah, it's 35 is not too bad, Larry. I <laughs> laugh a lot. Can't, can't wait for it. Yep. Freezing. Yep. 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 Okay. I want to get to a new one because this is a newer subscriber. Let me find it real quick. Pardon me. Where is it? Where is it? I just saw it. Oh, where'd it go? Three pigeons. Sponsorship. Where is it? I had it. Don't tell me I deleted it. I'll be mad at myself. Uh, no. Oh, come on. Whoop. Where is it? Okay, I'll get to his email in a second. Where is it? They just sent it to me. Boy, do I feel like a dumbass. God, they sent me this beautiful email, and I didn't quite get to it. Uh, did I put it under, did I have it under my other email? I did. It's under my other email. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is great. HB, hello. I've been watching your videos over the past, last few months and really appreciate the shared information, primarily about quality and finance. I appreciate your direct candor, candor also. My wife and I are not RVers yet, but we intend to. I have a racing background, so I have spent a lot of time living and working out of buses, toter homes, race trailers, etc., but never owned anything personally. We started our shopping journey looking for tag campers for weekend getaways, and through this process, we now have the ambition 
to go full-time with the goal of having everything set up by August. During this process, we haven't given too much consideration to financing since both our credit scores are pretty good. No later derogatory comments. Those are good scores. And we together make about, that's their own private business. We aren't rich by any means, but we can certainly afford a decent unit within our budget. We do not own a home and have rented the same home for the past seven years. I've been on the same job for almost nine years, earning, yep. My wife has worked for, yep, since 2000, yep. And I make the larger portion of our income, but have some stuff that I need to resolve. My wife makes X amount annually. Uh, good to go with her. We would really like to purchase a 2023 or 2024 Jayco North Point 390 CKDS, and they are advertised between 88 grand and 122 grand, depending on the features. We know what those are: generator, full body paint, etc. Common sense told me to put the horse before the cart, so I started shopping for trucks. One of your recent videos suggested not to purchase a truck, so we reached out to a credit union that advertised full-time RV financing. We were outright declined. They asked us if the loan app was for full-time, and we said yes. They also asked what our current rent rate is. We, but below are the formal reasons we were declined. Lack of real estate secured loan information. Ooh, I know who this credit union is. I can already tell you who this credit union is, and they're idiots. Too many bank cards with high balance compared to credit. Yeah, these guys are morons. Uh, we use two credit cards to pay all our monthly bills for points and pay off the credit cards each month to avoid interest. Last month, I went over the credit limit on one by a little bit and paid in full two days later. We do have multiple department store type cards, but all of them have a zero balance except for one card. I know this is a lot of info and I appreciate your time. I want to be fully open and transparent in hopes you might have some sound advice for us. This is lifestyle is a pipe dream if is this lifestyle a pipe dream for us or do we need to take steps and delay our transition lastly when we were at the florida rv show all the lenders there said no one offers full-time financing anymore due to some laws and restrictions and it make it unfair unfavorable to the lender yet the one we applied for alliant credit union yeah they're idiots anymore was advertising it uh as you could tell, sir, that sent me this email, I admit a lot of facts, right? I, I, I try to try to keep as much private as possible. Okay. <laughs> so first off, you've been in the same house for seven years. You're not moving out of that house <coughs> until August. Okay. Hi, Larry Silverton. So since you have not moved out of the house, you still have a place of residence. Here's my suggestion. There's three ways to go about this. Number one, pay off all the credit cards at the end of this month in April. Do not use them again until you go get an RV loan. Purchase your RV about a month before you plan on transitioning. So go down to the banks or go down to their dealerships. They can get you financed. And if they're that stupid where they can't get you financed, come out to, you, you have them call me, okay? I'll help you out, okay? Um, number two, you never tell a bank while you're living in your house that you are going full time. That's none of their business. Okay, but I also have a second suggestion to you, okay? Right, because I did a video on this on going full-time. When you move out into your fifth wheel, when you move out into a North Point, you need to get with a family member that is willing to have them be your mailing address, transfer your DMV, transfer your driver's license, 
transfer everything to that house, and then open up two new credit cards that you probably will never use, but open up two new credit cards with that new address. Here's why. Now that new address will show up on your credit bureau. So for some reason in five years or three years, whatever the case may be, you're done with the Jayco and you decide, hell, maybe we should go to a diesel pusher and keep going. Then you can get another loan because now you have a physical address that reports on your credit bureau and you're good to go. Okay, that's the secret. Not to go get some P.O. box in South Dakota, okay? Find a person, a family member, that is okay with you using their address for all of your mail and open up two new accounts using that address. And that is how you trick the system, okay? <laughs> so... That's what I would do, okay? If you're, so wherever you're at, apparently you're pretty close to Florida, find a dealership somewhere around you that has the North Point that you want to work with, and after you get rid of all the credit card debt at the end of this month, at the end of April, when you pay them off, just don't use the credit cards anymore, let the balance report. It takes 60 days. So by the time you go into July, you're ready to rock and roll and make your purchase. Number two, don't you dare pay for a truck yet. Set the loan up with that North Point, then go get the truck. You can get the truck easily. Go get the, to the fifth wheel first. Okay. If that doesn't help you, if you need more details, reach out to me through email, okay? But I'm going to email you some other stuff that I'm not going to share here because I think it's kind of private, okay? So, would escapees work for permanent address? No. Thanks, great information. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. Just be careful of tax consequences. That family member could have issues if they are getting certain tax credits. No, Patty, because you're going to sign a rental agreement. You'll sign that you're renting a room. You, that that I, I I that's what I was gonna send to them. You you want to make sure that you have some kind of written agreement that says you're renting a room, and that'll get rid of all the tax credit stuff. Hi Jane De Jando, how are you doing? Let's see what I missed, because I was talking. Round forty. Yeah, there you go. Trolls are starting to show up. It's okay, guys. That's why I appreciate you guys. Hey, guys, give a round of applause, please. Please thank all the mediators, Larry and Karen and Theo, and uh, I, there's a few others in there. Thank them very much because I, I really appreciate them. They help me, like, stay focused on this and not have to mediate. So um, please thank them. They're doing an amazing job. Okay. Next up. Where are we at? We're at 48 minutes. Okay. Oh, wrong email. Aha. Okay. Dear HB. Oh, that's a lot of personal information. Um, Dear HB. We do not understand how a bank would not want our money. We do understand from your conversations or your and your videos that banks don't like to finance anything more than 10 years old. Is there, is there a certain reason why? You would think that when the loan is cheaper, they'd be more willing to do the loan. Our credit is not the best, and we're trying to keep our payments under $300. And by the math you gave us, we need to buy a trailer around $10,000. Which is fine, but everything in the size and the needs that we have are all between a 2010 and 2011. 
and yet everywhere we go we get turned down even though we've been at the same job for 22 years and make plenty of money. We can tell and we've been told several times it has nothing to do with our credit it has to do with the collateral. Can you please be a little more specific? Why are they doing this? Well first off Everyone has a cutoff, even on cars. So um, now what normally would happen with, like, for example, if I had the capital, let's say I had a million dollars in a capital account, I could technically do a buy here, pay here situation. But most of the time with our, the RV industry and the new car industry and the new boat industry, the cash flow sucks. Cash flow absolutely sucks. I'm in a Lance travel trailer. Um, yeah, so they all have cutoffs. They also are limited. Each bank is given guidelines on what they're going to allow to lend. They, and it's usually set up by a master... Um, I don't know how to put it, but there's usually a, a master's, uh, um, oh God, it's called a, um, uh, it's an operating procedure, basically a master operating procedure. And it sets up all the bank guidelines that have to get approved through all the insurance companies. It's all complicated. It's all, it's a mess. But once they establish that, they'll make exceptions here and there if there's extra money. But if there's no extra money, they kind of have to go, okay, we're given $20 million this month to give out loans. They're going to hang tight. That's why sometimes it's easier to get a loan financed on an older unit towards the end of a month. Because if there's spare money and there's enough uh, incentive, then it's easier to get those exceptions. Okay. However, when they're older generally they have more problems when they're older they have to shrink the term down if they're going to make an exception to fit within what their master operating procedure says that they have to have okay so that being said older rvs are never easy to get financed so the best way to do it is to find a buy here pay here type of place which most of the time are strictly used RV dealerships or used car dealerships because they have a better cash flow than new dealerships. Because if you want to know why that how that happens, I'll give you a quick hint. Daily, daily, I'm spending ten thousand dollars a day in cash flow at my dealership, and that's cheap for batteries, parts, uh, bills. Cash doesn't stay in the bank account long enough for me to do a buy here, pay here situation, okay? And that's similar to every new RV dealership. That's Camping World, that's, you know, Lazy Days, that's Mom and Pop. So there's no real incentive or ability to do that kind of thing. That's why a lot of used, I call them, we call them junkyard dogs, but the guys that buy all, that do all that used stuff have personal loan lenders and credit card lenders on site that help them do their buy here, pay here business. So, yeah, exactly. At least we have rooms. Okay. All right. We got seven more minutes. Look at that. So seven more minutes, and I'm sorry I can't get to everybody. I really do. I apologize that, I mean, I'm trying my best, guys. Please bear with me. If you guys were watching this later, bear with me. I'm going to individually email everybody back. I just, it takes me some time, and I really want to apologize. Sometimes I can be really quick, and sometimes it's like, oh, boy, I got to spend a Sunday to do it, and that's not a big deal. I enjoy it. I actually enjoy giving you guys the answers because I think that, a lot, I don't think a lot of you would have bought an RV this year if you didn't find me. Or you wouldn't be planning on buying an RV this year if you didn't find me. Or you feel lost doing it. And I just feel very honored to help you guys out. I think it's one of those things that, um, you know, is beneficial to both parties. 
I'd like to one day retire from this, the retail side of this industry and just hit the road and talk to people at shows and help you shop and help you buy. I, I, I want to do that. My goal is if I can get to 100,000 subscribers, if I could get to as big as Liz Amazing or or Matt's RV Reviews or Josh the RV Nerd, if I can get that big, I would simply hit the road and hit all the big shows and teach people in person, have large classes and just teach people. Because by then, that's two, three million views a month. That's, you know, 20, 15 to 20 thousand dollars a month. I can live on that. You know, I mean, that's more than plenty. And that's more than plenty of move around and stuff. On a repo lot, um, you could, so a repo lot's a little different. A repo lot, they usually wholesale it to uh, dealerships. I'm glad I got you too, Larry. Love it. My internet does suck. I apologize. Uh, messy. Uh, do you think generally trailers are less problematic as, as a whole from design simplicity? Sometimes. I think... Generally, travel trailers are less problematic if they are simplified and have less technology on them. The more technology, the more things that can go wrong. But then again, a lot of us need that. I know I'll get that big in time. I know. Thank you, Karen. Uh, you will get there. I've been watching a long time, and I can see you make quality videos. Thank you, Patty. What should you do if you think... A guy is cheating on you, but you don't have any proof. Jazzy, I am not an expert in that. Some car auction places sell RVs periodically. Absolutely, Patrick. Oh, one more quick announcement before I go. Um, there was a huge request. So whether you're watching now or watching later, there was a huge request for me to have a Rumble account. So I ate my pride and I opened one. So if you want to check out, it's the same name as everything else, HBRV Lifestyle, but it's both words together. So I'm posting both the podcast and the main channel information on that one channel. I'm not going to do multiple rumbles. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm okay doing multiple YouTubes. It's easy. But Rumble, woo, good Lord, is that an impossible app to use to download videos. It's crazy. TikTok's easier. Well, th hey, thank you, Daryl. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate all of you. Appreciate all your support. I'm going to cut it off a little early tonight because I'm a little tired and I got to get to the motorhome videos. But look, guys, every Saturday night, 7 p.m., don't forget, get your coffee mugs. You know, start showing off the HBRV lifestyle merchandise. You know, it helps support the channel. Uh, I'm trying to get to the point where I'm going to save up a thousand bucks off this channel. Uh, anything I get on the merchandise side, uh, what it's going to go to is a better microphone and another set of cell phones that I can record on. So, you know, really appreciate it. Nothing's wrong with Rumble. It's just hard to download videos on there. It's just freaking impossible. It's just crazy. So, anyway, thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see you next Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific time.